heroes, gods, and monsters of the Greek myths. Marking period four. First section, the gods. First chapter, Zeus. Kronos, father of the gods who gave his name to time, married his sister Rhea, goddess of earth. Uh, guys, I know that we're just starting this book, but you're going to get used to the amount of um, sister marrying in Greek mythology. It is uh, overpowering. Anyway, now Cronus had become the king of the gods by killing his father Uranus, the first one. The dying Uranus had prophesied, saying, You murder me now and steal my throne but one of your own sons will dethrone you, for crime begets crime. So Cronus was very careful. One by one, he swallowed his children as they were born. First, his three daughters, Hestia, Demeter, and Hera, then two sons, Hades and Poseidon. One by one, he swallowed them all. Rhea was furious. I mean, duh, she, he, he has been literally eating their children. It's kind of a terrible idea. She was determined that he would not eat her next child, who she felt would sure, sure would be a son. When her time came, she crept down the slope of Olympus to a dark place to have her baby. It was a son, and she named him Zeus. She hung a golden cradle from the branches of an olive tree and put him to sleep there. Meaning that she let him sleep there, not like... You get what I mean. Then she went back to the top of the mountain. She took a rock and wrapped it in swaddling clothes and held it to her breast, humming a lullaby. Cronus came snorting and bellowing out of his great bed, snatched the bundle from her, and swallowed its clothes and all. Rhea stood down the mount, uh, stole down the mountainside to the swinging golden cradle and took her son down to, into the fields. She gave him to a shepherd family to raise promised that their sheep would never be eaten by wolves. Here, Zeus grew to be a beautiful young boy, and Kronos, his father, knew nothing about him. Finally, however, Rhea became lonely for him and brought him back to the court of the gods, introducing him to Kronos as a new cup-bearer. Kronos was pleased because the boy was beautiful. One night, Rhea and Zeus prepared a special drink, they mixed mustard and salt with the nectar. The next morning, after a mighty swallow, Cronus vomited up first a stone, and then Hestia, Demeter, Hera, Hades, and Poseidon, who, being gods, were still undigested and still alive. They thanked Zeus and immediately chose him to be their leader. Then, a mighty battle raged. Cronus was joined by the Titans, his half-brothers, huge, twisted, dark creatures taller than trees, whom he kept pent up in the mountains until there, was, until there was fighting to be done. They attacked the young gods furiously, but Zeus had allies too. He had gone into darker caverns, caves under caves under caves, deep in the mountainside, formed by the first bubbles of the cooling earth. Here, Kronos, thousands of centuries before, a short time in the life of a god, had pent up other monsters, the one-eyed cyclops and the hundred-handed ones. Zeus unshackled those ugly cousins and led them against the titans. There was a great rushing and tumult in the skies. The people on earth heard mighty thunder and saw, and saw clouds shatter. The earth quaked and tidal waves rolled as the gods fought. The titans were as tall as trees. And old Cronus was a crafty leader. He attacked fiercely, driving the young gods before him. But Zeus had laid a trap. Halfway up the slope of Olympus, he whistled for his cousins, the hundred-handed ones, who had been lying in ambush. They took up huge boulders, a hundred each, and hurled them downhill at the titans. The titans thought the mountain itself was falling on them. They broke ranks and fled. The young goat god Pan was shouting with joy. Later, he said that this was, it was his shout that made the titans flee. This is where we get the word panic. Now, the young gods climbed to Olympus, took over the castle, and Zeus became their king. 
No one knows what happened to Kronos and his titans. I mean, we're about to find out, and then that's like two or three myths. But sometimes mountains still explode in fire, and earth still quakes, and no one exactly knows why. Before I stop, I want to point out to all of my students, these myths, these ways that uh, this author presents them, is only the way this author presents these myths. That means that there's multiple ways that aren't the way that he says, which is okay. Myths, creation myths, beginnings, they're all um, changeable. They're, they're all something that can be moved and molded to better suit people. But sometimes he leads us with those statements of no one knows what happens, and yet we're going to find out in the next few chapters that we know exactly what happens to Kronos. And that's whether or not you want to go into the Percy Jackson series for it. So, for now, ta-ta.